So, Robert, why don't you start us off? Give us a little bit of background. Um, when and how did you start the flat panel shootout? Uh, what was your intention? Thank you, Scott. We publicized, we started publicly showing the shootout in 2004. And uh, I was doing it for quite a few years before that because I always had a keen interest in determining the differences between the high-end televisions and how they compared against each other. So back in 2004, we made it a public event and we invited the public, we webcasted it live, we took all the premium products uh, that year and every year since then, uh, put them up, butt up against each other on a wall and calibrated them and tested them with all the SMPTE and ITU test patterns to uh, exploit all the good and bad out of them uh, <laughs> to figure out how they performed and how they competed against each other. So it's been a, a, a love of labor for over a decade now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a love of labor, definitely, because there's a lot of labor involved. I know that now for sure. Yeah. And, a lab and a labor of love, no doubt. Um, yes. the, um, uh, the TVs that you choose are always the flagship models from, or have been traditionally, uh, from each of the manufacturers uh, under the assumption, and correct me if I'm wrong, that that that's going to represent the very best that each manufacturer can do, picture quality-wise. That's correct, and it usually does represent that. There have been some years where we've found uh, a one step down actually performing better than a flagship model, so that has happened. And in some prior years, we used one step down model as well uh, to put them in because they were so worthy and uh, we had a lot of demand from the public. But typically, there's a vast difference between uh, stepping down one model. Typically, you go to edge lit instead of rear, rear uh, edge instead of rear full array. So mm -hmm. we we stick with the flagship models primarily. Mm -hmm. And uh, this year we had four flagship models. We're going to talk about those in a minute. First, though, I want to uh, turn to Joe and to Mark. Um, let's start with Joe. Uh, how long have you been attending the event, and what do you find its value to be to you? Well, I, I think this was my seventh uh, time to attend the event. I find them very helpful because it's the only place we can get all of the TVs together, calibrate it to a particular standard, and then you can make your determinations. Uh, you just can't do that going into a, a brick and mortar store where they're just they're in vivid mode. One store has this brand, another store has that brand. Um, you just can't compare them. So. You know, Robert's done, I think he's done a great job over the years of, of putting this together. And, uh, and I think it's a valuable service to us in the uh, out here in the, the geekdom land. <laughs> yeah, I, I believe you. Um, Mark, how about you? How long have you been going to the event? So this is number three for me. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you know, the my third time voting, uh, but, you know, second time voting as an expert. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's been an interesting evolution because uh, it, each time that I go, I actually have uh, gained more knowledge about video. Um, you know, as as I, each time I walk through the door, basically I've been a more knowledgeable, uh, you know, about the topic. So mm -hmm. that is cool. certainly Robert. I think that's one of the one of the aspects of this event that you want to make sure happens, which is educating consumers, enthusiast consumers, to be sure. Uh, about what goes into making video, what the system standards are, why they were all calibrated in the way that they were. Uh, it's really an educational experience for, for the participants as well as an opportunity, as Joe said, to see them all side by side in a well-controlled environment, all calibrated. That's correct. Uh, we enjoy that part of it. Uh, a very, very big part of our event is to bring more awareness to quality video and to educate people on video performances and standards. So we've had some fantastic uh, VIP guests throughout the years, and we've done a great job in spreading the word. We we, we put the uh, videos up on YouTube, and they, they are over half a million unique views right now. So it's a very popular event. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody in the chat room asked if, uh, if a video of this event was going to be put up, and I assume it has already. Is that correct? Well, Mark put one up, and I love the one that he put up, and I linked to it, by the way. And oh, good. We will, we will take the event, we'll edit it down to, to uh, one video that will be up in the next few weeks. 
Okay. Uh, Dargo in the chat room was asking that question. And uh, and he thanks you for, for sharing that with us, and, and I do too, because certainly having uh, having that on on a video that people can see after the fact is a great thing. However, I will also say that uh, on the thread of the sh about the shootout results that I posted on AVS, which is an extremely active thread, um, a number of people have commented, and rightly so, that you shouldn't expect to be able to evaluate the quality of each TV from the video because you're looking at it through a video camera, which is a pretty significant filter compared to being able to see them, uh, you know, right there in person. Uh, Joe, I, I assume you would agree with that. One hundred percent. Those the, the video the videos just there's don't even give you a, a glimpse of what you see when you're there. So I, yeah. I can't imagine anybody making a decision based upon looking at these videos. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, or really, you know, any I don't recommend people make a final decision based on anything but their own eyes. But the problem, of course, is that, when, as you said, I think Joe made this point. When you go into a Best Buy or another brick and mortar store, you're looking at these TVs in their vivid mode and, and they're just not calibrated properly. Plus, when you get them home, you're in you what your living room or home theater or whatever is not the same as a showroom floor by any means. So this is a rare opportunity to see these TVs right next to each other in a controlled environment, light controlled environment uh, with all calibrated uh, fully as much as can be done. Um, each one allows anyway and and see them side by side that way, all playing the same content. I mean, Robert, you had a sophisticated uh, matrix switcher there and four Oppo Blu-ray players that were we were able to switch around and that was able to send the same signal to all four TVs, which is, I think, a pretty important part of things. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, we put a lot of effort into the switch and getting the latest firmware and specs on that switch so we can pass uh, the color space properly. We test the switch very carefully. We certainly have to pass the <coughs> HD at 60 frames per second. So we have a video server in there from Sony, actually, uh, the FMPX10. Uh, so we pass 4K as well through there. The, it has eight inputs and 16 outputs. Mm -hmm. It's quite a sophisticated switch. <laughs> well, when we if we get more TVs next year, we'll certainly be able to accommodate them. Right. I like, um, I'd like to make one, if, if I may, one. Please. Um, relating to the videos. I, don't, I didn't mean to main, uh, implicate that they're not important because there's some very interesting um, over the years. I mean, you've had Joe Kane, Dr. Weber, various presenters that you otherwise wouldn't be able to hear or see mm -hmm. talk about this stuff without the video. So, they, I mean, they do, they do play an important role, but you just can't judge the quality of the, uh, the TVs based on those videos. 